The finals just released a new season, and I got early access. But I know what you're thinking. Asterix, why should I care? Last time I played, I played for like two weeks. It was full of cheaters, and I got bored, and I stopped playing it. Now, I know you feel that way, and I kind of agree. But in this video, I want to do two things. I want to give you a list of pros and a list of cons. And there are some cons. Nothing is perfect, no matter how much it fills me with shibitly dupes every time I play. Now, I think one of the biggest things holding back the finals was a feeling of what do I do now? Most of the criticisms I see people get the finals are, I played it for two weeks, I got bored, so I stopped playing. And that's legitimate. The finals saw an amount of success that it obviously wasn't ready for after its surprise release at the Game Awards about nine or ten months ago. Now, it was a massive success. The gunplay felt amazing. The game was super unique. It was in an FPS realm that was full of copy and paste, cookie cutter, other studios just filling the scene with things that all looked the same. The finals was a 3v3v3 arena PvP game that had elements of a extraction modes that we really haven't seen before. And once everyone got their hands on it, the player count skyrocketed. We were all enjoying the game, but unfortunately that success was kind of short-lived because after the first season and the beta, Steam charts show the player base declined sharply. And I think that's due to the feeling of what do I do now? Now before I get into how season four is going to fix that problem, let me catch you up what has happened since then to now as someone who's stuck around that entire time. Embark Studios has added weekly content to the game in terms of balance and patch updates every Wednesday, but there still wasn't much to grind past the ranked mode. Now, somewhere along the way, they fleshed out the banquet mode, which was their casual player base mode where you could respawn immediately and go around and just get into gunfights. It was a really lighthearted, fun way to play the game and get into gunfights. They also added Power Shift. Now, Power Shift is a 5v5 mode that is like hardpoint on a platform that's floating all around various maps, another casual, friendly mode that was a lot of fun. But in Season 3, Embark admits themselves they took a step backward. They made Terminal Attack their main focus mode, which, if you don't know, Terminal Attack is just like Search and Destroy from Call of Duty, causing the finals to go through somewhat of an identity crisis. Wait a minute! Who are you? Now that was Season 3. Now here, at the cusp of Season 4, Embark is claiming they've learned from all of their past mistakes, and everything they're offering with this season is an amalgamation of everything they've learned. Now call it glaze, but I think they have, and it looks like they're going to deliver on that promise. But don't take it from me, listen to what it has to offer. One of the things I'm most excited for is the sponsorship program. Now, if you download the finals and boot it up, next Thursday at the launch of Season 4, you're going to be faced with the option to pick one of three sponsors. It's going to be Endemo, Halto, or Isol. Once you sign with these sponsors, Sponsors, you're gonna have the opportunity to complete contracts for them, earn in-game free rewards that coincide with the color scheme of that sponsor. Now, for example, I'm gonna side with Holto. I really like the orange jacket that they're gonna offer, but what that does for me is that every day when I log on, it doesn't matter what game mode I am playing, I'm making progress with that sponsor with a point system called fans. Now, what you can do as you complete these contracts and make progress with these fans is you're earning fans for that sponsor that is sponsoring you in the arena. The more fans you get, the more you put towards the total amount towards the entire company of Halto. Everyone who signs with Halto is going to go towards that same progress bar. So there's a sense of community with everyone who signs with a certain sponsor. They're all in a competition to see which sponsor with which champions are going to come and get the most amount of fans for that sponsor. I think that's fantastic. That adds a layer onto everything else lore-wise and community-wise that they really didn't have in seasons before this. Now another thing they did last season was when they took out the normal ranked mode and they put in terminal attack they put something in its place in the place of the cash out mode they took that tournament style and they put it into something called world tour. what world tour was is a full finals tournament that you could progress through but if you lost you didn't lose any progress so it wasn't a true ranked mode but it was still the same format so in the eyes of someone who wanted to play a little bit every single day if you're losing a whole lot one day you're not going to lose any progress every time you win you make progress towards that rank system the top rank was emerald so every day you logged on you got a little bit closer to what you're aiming for for the end of the season Season. But it wasn't a true competitive mode because you couldn't lose any points if you lost a game, like in rank. Now with this season they fixed that, they give us the dedicated rank cash out mode, is it has a ripple effect. Taking all those hardcore players and putting them into the dedicated rank mode we've been waiting for, takes them out of that world tour mode, and leaves behind that mode that is fleshed out with all the attention it got from the devs, and gives it to the casual player base. So what you can do, is you can work towards something the entire season now, while using the guns that aren't meta, the builds that aren't 
meta while having fun with your friends, not having to sweat it out, and still feeling like that little bit you played every single day got you towards a goal that you're going to earn at the end of the season. And that gives you a reason to log on every single day, which is what is going to fight that what do I do now feeling that caused so many players to drop the game back in the beta in season one, season two. Now, on top of that, that is not the only thing the casual player base is going to get to enjoy this season. Now, Bank It, they made some changes to that. You die in Bank It, you respawn almost immediately. So you're going in there, you can listen to a podcast, pop some headphones in, hop into a Discord server, have some fun with your friends. And if you're just a casual looking to play for a little bit, Bank It is your mode. And again, on top of that, you don't want to play Bank It, you can play Power Shift, which is that 5v5 hardship mode that I talked about earlier. The amount of options you need to have when you log on as someone who's not going to take the game serious, or if you are going to take it serious, is what a game needs to survive long run. I think some of these companies are focusing on how the ad is going to look when you first push the game. And these ads work, but they quickly fall off in terms of player base because they don't have enough there to retain the player. They get bored. So as someone who's sitting down, you're looking at World Tour, you're looking at Bank It, you're looking at Power Shift. And if you want to take the game a bit more serious, you can go into that ranked mode or practice cash out and grind for bragging rights there. Now, in terms of bragging rights, that's another new thing that is going to be offered this season. Player cards. If you played Apex Legends, you know how player cards and badges work. This is kind of similar. You've got badges for your play styles that you can earn and flex on. Once you kill someone, the person you killed is going to see your player card. You can customize the border of the player card. You can customize the pose of your character, the background, you earn these through these, through the contracts I talked about with the sponsors earlier, which gives you another reason to go and do those contracts with that sponsor. Now, if you're hearing this and you're thinking, hey, I don't chase kills. I'm a support player and that's just as important. My team is going to lose if I don't play on that team and I may not get double digit kills, but my support score is through the roof. There are support score badges. So if you are a support score player and you are a support player, you can kit out your entire player card and flex that as your playstyle, which I think is fantastic. Another thing that they did this season that I think is going to add some variety is that they're doing the very minimum style of attachment system. Now, anyone who knows about COD, I know that makes you wary, but it's just sights and iron sights. You now have the ability to choose between iron sights and sights within certain guns. And it really did add an amount of depth to those guns that I had used so much already and gave me a way to use them in a new way this time. Now, in my opinion, all of that has been a lot. But for a lot of the player base that fell off and left this game, those were not the issues. The reason they left was there were too many cheaters or the performance was abysmal and they left because their PC or their system was not running it the right way. Now, I have some good news for you. First, I'm going to talk about performance. My PC is not some crazy rig. I run a 4070 Ti and an i7 10700K. It's not bottom of the line, but it's not top of the line either. And I'm telling you right now during the season how the game runs now, I run into a lot of performance issues as it is, and I do not run all high settings. When I got my hands on this playtest, I heard they were going to fix performance and give a smoother experience. I immediately turned everything onto high, even ray tracing, and even then I immediately saw an improvement on performance. It felt so much better. It was buttery smooth. Now I can't 100% percent guarantee for you that's going to be your experience but I do know for sure there was an improvement and they delivered on what they said in terms of performance so if you drop this game because you were having performance issues do know that they updated their engine and that has resulted in performance improvement so that's something you can get excited about that's good news if you were worried about the cheaters again I can't give 100% guarantee but since everyone left when the cheater situation was so bad in season one in the beta they have added an entirely new layer of anti-cheat created by their parent company Nexon so there's Embark's base anti I cheat and then Nexon added another and since then I haven't had a real big issue with cheaters. Now I will acknowledge that the player count is much lower. That could be why I'm not running into as many cheaters so take that with a grain of salt but all I can speak to right now is results and what has happened and there has been a change. If that's enough for you to give the game another try then I think you should but to touch on everything as a whole you'll be able to have something to sit down log on to and enjoy grinding towards something every single day whether you're a casual or someone who takes the game very seriously. So if you've heard all this and I've convinced you to give the finals another chance. I hope you're excited and I hope you have a good time. If not, I would like you to let me know in the comments down below, what does Embark have to do to change this game to give you another chance? And even if it isn't this game, maybe a dev studio will see that that's working on the next big game that'll do that and help you find your next favorite game after the finals. But I would like to see your thoughts down below. But for me, I'm excited and until the game comes out, I'll just have to see you all in the arena.